we now move on. Uh, the next speaker is uh, David Keller. He's a lab technician uh, in the Theragnostic Discovery Unit. And, and he worked together with uh, Lola and Timon in the team uh, very hard on the implementation uh, of the sample pooling. Uh, so uh, David, please. Uh... Yeah, thank you, Christian, for the nice introduction. Um, as he already mentioned, uh, here, okay. Um, as he already mentioned, so we were uh, taking over the part of the sample pooling. Um, so as also as Jörg Goldhahn mentioned um, in February, so the requirements were that after the samples were collected to the collectors that we had in the morning roughly uh, three hours time to do the pooling until they are delivered to the virology. And he also mentioned during the ramp up phase, we expected around 100 samples, which could then be upscaled to 500 to 600 samples per day. So this needs to be done on a daily basis, um, five days a week. And um, therefore we thought of using one of our liquid handlers, um, mainly um, uh, to do it more reliable. So the pipetting and also um, to do it fast enough. So uh, the requirements from our side were also that we needed uh, staff to do this. So these were then mainly students, which we trained for. So the first thing in the preparation, we needed them to read the barcodes of the tubes. Also one person must be available for the transport between the barcode reading and then one person for the automation. So the pooling is quite uh, simple. So we have uh, eight samples in total with around three milliliter of carrier medium containing uh, the saliva inside. Um, so this, uh, so we aspirate one milliliter of it, uh, dispense it uh, around 940 microliter to a deep well block. So this serves then as, as a, um, in case the pool gets positive that the virology can retest um, the signal sample. And this is clearly a, an advantage then rather to ask the test person to provide another sample. So in the second step, we dispense 60 microliter of the saliva sample to a pool. And in total, we pool eight of the samples. And then we also add 2x of the lysis buffer to these pooled samples, and they are then transported to the virology. So um, actually the pooling is done automated, but uh, what needs to be done manually beforehand is the barcode scanning of the samples. Um, we will see later that this is crucial because if uh, you can also implement an automated barcode reading, but we will see later that um, if we did do that, then it could also lead to crashes because how people would uh, give away their samples. So we not only the students under the laminar flow hood, uh, they not only need to read the barcode of the tube, but also these carriers, which are part of the collector, are uh, barcode labeled and tracked. So each of the position then from the tube, um, this was developed from, from CBU. And we also are tracking then the, the pool and the pool racks, as well as the deep well block with the single sample. So in total, basically they have uh, three of these racks of 96 samples, which can be done during a run of roughly 30 minutes on the liquid handler. So um, basically what they need to do is then to scan these vials, to give it a short vortex and to open and position the vial. Um, what we also needed to think about is the safety. So uh, this, um, so we have some leak proof um, transport boxes and we uh, they are two times closed. So we have this uh, covering for the, um, for the rack and then we have the transport box. 
Um, so for the pooling, we are using a Tikon EVO 150 liquid handler, as you can see here. So it is part of one of our integrated system. Um, and we are using for the pooling uh, uh, for Liha fingers. These are used for uh, cherry picking. Um, so we are using one milliliter filter tips, uh, conductive filter tips. So this means in case we would, there would be some issue that the um, saliva sample is not uh, going into the machine. And also conductive, it means that we can um, check for the liquid level. So this is the scheme, how it looks like on the system. Um, so we have these custom-made carriers, three of them with the barcode and the 50 ml saliva sample tubes. Then we have the deep well block with the single samples and then one custom-made rack with the cobas tubes for the virology. Then we have several more positions for the tips as well as the waste and one of the for the lysis buffer tube. So in the next slide, I want to quickly show you a short video, um, how it looks like. Um, so we will see my colleague here um, um, and the Okay, so this was a, a quick video for a part of our advertisement video uh, where, uh, where it shows how the, the pooling is done. Um, so next, I will also want to talk about some of the, during the implementation phase, some of the issues or of the thoughts which we had during this phase. So as you know, we are, uh, research um, technology platform. So mainly we are not uh, working with uh, diagnostic procedures. So we, so, and we are also not um, had to consider a lot about uh, safety of, for the handling of these samples. So as Jörg already mentioned to be had, we were in close contact with SGU. So the safety, health and environment office. And um, the good thing is we already had two BSL2 labs. So one where the liquid handler is and one with the laminar flow for the, for the sample preparation. So in uh, accordance with SQ, we set up the waste disposal for, um, so the waste disposal for the tubes after the pooling and also the requirements for the students. So they got trained in how to handle these samples and um, basically the general rules of the BICEL2 environment. Because we have to think that uh, we are handling here potential infectious samples. And what was also mainly probably you already know about the coronavirus that uh, there's a lot about aerosols. So we had to think about um, how we can safely process these samples. So we rebuilt it, uh, our Ticon Evo liquid handler. So normally we don't have the front door in place here, um, but we put it in place again. We have this chemical um, air suction, which we, was already in place, um, but uh, because of the aerosols, we also need, wanted, the SQ wanted that we filter out them using a HEPA filter, which we installed. And also about the sample transport and handling um, to uh, our lab on the campus and also between the barcode reading and the processing. So um, yeah, so we thought about how to do this in, in, a, in a reliable way together with SKU. And uh, luckily also um, uh, we were uh, quite lucky to get, to get the racks for this. 
And what we also needed to constantly do is um, because um, the students needed to be trained and also um, needed to get an, an SOP which they uh, follow step by step during the um, sample pooling. So we created um, an, an SOP which they follow. So this is mainly that there is no error during the run um, because with the barcode scanning, so there is uh, actually almost no chance that we would um, um, falsely track a sample. So um, now I want to talk about some of the pitfalls which we later on saw, especially then during the, the first uh, real runs in, uh, yeah, in April, where, where, when the scaling up was done. So as I mentioned, they need to, uh, to scan the barcode. And we saw that some people um, disposed their sample um, a bit different than what it was expected. So either with a bag in it or they um, didn't put the, their sample into the uh, big tube rather than into the carrier medium. And um, so uh, therefore we needed to carefully also watch that, that this was correctly done because if we would um, use it in this way, then it, this uh, would lead to a crash on our liquid dispenser. And another thing we saw that especially in the beginning, I will show you with this video is that we had some samples where it was obvious that uh, they didn't give us saliva, they gave us some nasty uh, mucus samples. And um, uh, this means we also had some issues then with the pooling itself. And also, as we heard later for the virology, this was a an, an major concern then. So I will quickly show you with this video. So um, you, you see this yellow long chain basically. Yeah, so basically what happened here is that um, this sample um, not only, so it was not aspirated um, good enough and then it also went over the, some other tubes which were luckily transferred, but um, basically it was, a, it was a contamination. And then we found out that um, actually in the instructions there was some difference between the English and the German version so we changed these instru instructions that they should only really give a saliva sample and not a mucus sample and only healthy uh, test individuals. Because if you are uh, sick, maybe you have uh, a cough and then you would deliver mucus instead of this. And the thing is during the barcode reading, you don't see actually um, if this is really, um, liquid or if it is uh, very viscous. Um, also, we did this visual check. We instructed the students to do this, to see whether it, there is really a sample in it of, or if it's empty or if it was delivered the wrong way. And we also implemented this contamination and tracking sheet. So instead of just running the method, they need to still take care of it to see whether uh, something would uh, happen during the run. And we also have done an automatic reply to the person then based on this sheet that it should provide another test um, because it, uh, it failed to do the, the pooling. And I think now, so currently we rarely or don't see any more these, these samples with the mucus. And I think now also the, the employees, they know now how to provide their sample. And yes, so I think this, these are some things which we only saw later.
during the, the working phase. So with this, um, I would like to hand over 